our minds have been perverted that we have placed the creation, the design of sex on a pedestal above God. That it, it surrounds our minds and we cannot focus on God. So right now we're going to pray for sexual addiction or those addicted to sexual addiction. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for love, mercy, your grace, your blessing, the ministry of Christ to come to this earth and die for sins, to restore us to being sons and daughters of God. Father, we live in a world where society says sex sells. We live in a world where society says that men are dogs, that women are female dogs, that men now boast about how many partners they have. Women boast about using their bodies to gain wealth or to gain security. We live in a world where multiple partners, where infidelity is considered norm and that if someone falls victim to a partner betraying them that they somehow brought it on themselves or they should have seen it so they shouldn't have got caught up we live in a world that doesn't believe in marriage that that doesn't believe in love because the world says or believes that the purpose of sex is to have as much partners to have as much pleasure just to experiment as we so feel. Father, the minds of society on a whole has been perverted. That a world of lust is now considered norm and standard and that no one bats an eye when they are controlled by their desires and their mind cannot consciously choose. That men cannot see a woman without having to turn their necks. That men cannot see a woman without having to look at her behind. That women are also caught in this. And we say it's normal, but it's not. Father, it's sin. It's addiction. It's sexual addiction. That has destroyed countless lives. Destroyed countless families torn home, homes apart, created single parent homes, created orphans because of it. And Father, you established the marriage covenant, you established sex in perfection. And you intend to restore it back to perfection. Your purpose is it for it your purpose is for it to be holy, to be just. Sexuality is fine. Sexuality is what you intend, but not the way Satan has perverted it, has lied. Sex is considered dirty, dark. We view Satan as the author of sex, many people do. Because our minds view it as dirty, dark, a, a guilty pleasure. But it's not. That's not the way you designed it at all. It's pure. It's clean. It's righteous in the proper context. But Father, we have become addicted to lust, to sexual sin. Every day, we're plagued by it. And Father, we're praying for redemption. We're praying for deliverance. We're praying for you to restore in mankind's hearts a true understanding of sexuality. An understanding where God is above it, that God oversees and God places it in the marriage bed of husband and wife. We pray for you to give us hearts that desire only what you desire for us when it comes to sexuality. That you remove the lust for the extremes, the extreme pleasures we have seeked, the extreme lengths we have gone to, men leaving their wives, wives leaving their husbands, people seeking out multiple partners at risk of disease. 
people staying up all night on pornographic sites, people masturbating multiple times throughout the day, people being slaves to pleasure, slaves to sex, slaves to sin, a tool which was meant to bring couples together without controls. There are people, the world is so enslaved to it that the fashion industry is a slave to it. It is unbelievable that in the church, we call church members by their dress sexy. That we're dressing sexy at church, that we have women buying clothing for the enhancing of their looks, the physical attributes, that we are now so in tune about sexuality that just the way I dress, we must look sexually attractive. That if we do not appear sexually attractive in our everyday life, that we have a lower self-esteem. Father, this was never your intent. Your intent never was for the world to be polluted like this. For whether or not we purchase items be based on how it makes our hips look or how it makes breasts look or how it makes body parts look how fitting it is whether a supermodel is promoting a brand whether any of these things the world has given you have never designed it for people to be considered beautiful and attractive on levels of one to ten that women cannot leave their homes if their hair is not done if their makeup's not on that people stress themselves to get plastic surgery everything because the world of sex and attraction has been perverted and we are all addicted to this in one form or another that our minds and the way we act towards others is based on it. men only seeking after women that meet not really what would have been their normal standard had this not been the culture of the society but men looking for women with the bigger breasts women with the bigger hips Women with the longer hair or the lighter skin, the ones without any bumps or cuts. This does not mean this would be a good wife, a good mother, a faithful person. But for some reason, this becomes the standard that this lady must have these characteristics. And if she has these characteristics, then I'll look a little further to see if she has the other traits. And so we spend forever wasting our time searching and searching instead of saying, God, send me the woman you intend for me. A woman who puts you first, a woman who loves you, a woman who will be faithful, a woman who will put others first, who will be a good mother and a good spouse. Men are also looked at in the same way. The man must be tall. He must be muscular built. He must be... Uh, well, there's financial factors, but also women have been deceived to say the statement that size matters. That the larger his sexual organ, the better he's able to please her. That this is the first thing many women look for. And then, after looking for the physical features, then they will look to see if he will be faithful. If he will put her first, that he, if he would love her. Like Christ loved the church. Then they will see if he would be a good father. A patient man. And women find themselves forever. Looking. Finding. Testing. Men are also testing. Wondering why they're never satisfied. Because we've been deceived. That sex. And the sexual lifestyle. And the physical world. Will mean that we will end up with pleasure. But it never does. Sex is a result. Sex is a tool, a byproduct of love. First, establish a relationship with you. Then with the people that you connect us with, the people that you put in our lives. The person, not for us to go hunting for the dimes, the tens, and saying anyone below a, a six or five or below a, is unworthy of our attention, that they are ugly and unattractive and that the world actually believes this 
people have low self-esteem all because of this world of physical that sex is everywhere and this is the value for the world and many people say I'm not sexually addicted but if we are affected by this if a woman's self-esteem is affected by how she looks that how she has to put on a certain outfits and a certain dress a certain makeup or hair a certain way there is something wrong that sex has affected our look our outlook on life that the physical has affected us if men cannot look at a woman who might not have large breasts who might not have a large hip, who might not have all the curves but look at her and says oh i can only be friends with her but i'm not addicted it says there is something wrong that you're not getting past the physical that there's something sexual if a woman cannot be covered up and still feel attractive if Clothing has to be tight fitting and for her to be attractive or men have to compare themselves to other men for themselves to feel that they have work. That we have to have numbers on not just how many women we slept with our self worth. There is something wrong, Father. We are deceived, we are lost, we are addicted in a sexual world. Father, we ask you to plant in us righteousness, holiness. Restore us, plant your light in us, plant the Holy Spirit in us, plant repentance in us. Bring us to see how far this world of sexuality has carried us. That the abuse of what you design, what you created, has so far ruined the world that we must simply look at you to find what we must do with ourselves. That there is only happiness, there is only freedom. That even going for their married couples who might have married what they considered a dying piece, but she became pregnant and she gained weight. Or he might have been injured or he became balder or he might have gained weight. There might have been an accident one of them had. And their spouses leave them because no, they're no longer physically attractive. That person is deceived. They're sexually addicted in a, in a certain way. Father, we're praying for deliverance. To see that if you created us as human beings... That means you created all of us beautiful. That uh, one person is not above another because of sexual knowledge, sexual know-how. That because one person might be a different size from a different person, more a bigger cup size or bigger hips, does not mean anything in your eyes. Father, help us to see through your eyes your intention for us. Father, free us from the addiction, whether it be on a simple scale, judging on one to ten, the partners we look for, to the extremes of pornographic addiction, multiple partner addiction, where at the end of the day, where none of us are happy. We all wonder why in the world we live, we, when we think we're doing or we're following the steps, but that these are man made steps, and they will never provide happiness. Father, provide us with peace. Send us the Holy Spirit. To bring us to repentance, to bring us to confession for our sins, so that we can accept the sacrifice that Christ did for us. Forgive us for our sins. Be with all sexual addicts and help them to plead for your grace. To accept your grace, to accept Christ's sacrifice, to be born again, to then walk in newness of life, to have a relationship with you. And to be righteous, to be holy, to create a new world, to change the culture, to be counterculture, showing holiness first, righteousness first, love, peace, purity first, and not the physical first. And that we do not think about the physical, and that it is not the norm, that when the physical thoughts do come, that we will pray for your mercy, your grace, and pray for your deliverance, and you will provide a way out. Father, free us all. Free every addict from sexual addiction. And bring us into your relationship. And help us never to go back. But to continue to walk closer and closer to you. And this we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.